Hi guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. We're gonna jump into my brokerage account. Uh, this is a six-figure account that was recently started uh, within the, in the last couple of years. Uh, anyway, we're gonna chronicle the holdings, explain some of the philosophies, why I seek out um, more of a dynamic strategy in this portfolio, uh, I explain that it isn't limited. And as the account grows, it's going to be nice to have no ceiling above so I can contribute to when and how I want to the account. Um, but this is really important. A lot of people want to know how to invest. Well, this is how to invest. Um, this is a, an, an inside look at a real portfolio with real dollars at work um, that has been built up over the last couple of years uh, to, to a sizable and respectable uh, way and it and it really validates what it is that I talk about from a fundamental side on the channel to help folks really get a holistic picture about what is what is possible out there. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. I come onto YouTube to share my story and hopefully get the message out to someone out there that uh, can feel empowered uh, by the message. Uh, and, and follow along the same path that I have to financial security. So with that, we'll jump into the account and conduct the review. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody into the taxable brokerage account. This is one of the larger accounts that I chronicle on the channel. Um, this is um, a six-figure account, and it plays an important role here in my total overall strategy where I'm capped in my Roth IRA contributions from year to year. I usually try to fund those up um, the first of January of every year, so I, I'll push over the $12,000 bill into those two respective accounts. This allows me a little bit more latitude to do what I want, when I want, and how I want. Uh, so pretty important here, and each of these holdings kind of speak to that end a little bit. I do spackle in a little bit of dividend element to this portfolio, and I'll chronicle those holdings as we as we move through here. But this is kind of a a really a hodgepodge account in here with four strategies deployed. Um, the first on the top end being the option strategy. I'm, I'm not going to get too much into that there. Right now, I do roll out the updates on the options on the Friday live stream on the channel. Uh, and um, those are doing quite well. Um, obviously, you can see there um, with some uh, long calls there on highly on at 10. Um, those are obviously in the money right now. Um, and then some uh, cash secured puts at $9, uh, $9 there. Um, with different dates there and um, doing quite well. Uh, if we get those put, that's fine. Uh, on another retracement to the stock, uh, it's securely above 10. Um, that can change uh, from week to week on Hylion. So we'll continue to monitor those and we'll, we'll continue to collect profit on those um, as, um, as we go forward here. Now, the rest of the portfolio are a mixture between uh, large growth uh, large cap dividend paying value companies as well as an element of uh, dividend value in lieu of bonds okay if I were to own some bonds I would probably do so in either this account or the Roths but uh, I don't really have any desire uh, to own bonds per se so I, I do own regulated utilities and some telecom in lieu of owning the bonds. So that's just more in line with my strategy and, and my profile uh, than anything. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not down on owning bonds, but I, I think it plays uh, into a different strategic wealth building goal uh, as opposed to, um, you know, owning bonds to preserve capital. Uh, um, whereas I would rather grow capital and take on the risk associated with growing capital. So th that's just my thought on that. Uh, obviously, here on the top end, my top discretionary pick in Amazon, I think it's best in breed. I don't think any company comes close to what Amazon brings to the table. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. It anchors a nice position in this portfolio. It, it is a cornerstone investing um, uh, initiative here with five shares. Um, it's all over the place. 
I, I've found that Amazon is an interesting company. I've made a lot of house money trading Amazon in the past. Um, this is the, the first stab and a nice investing um, piece to Amazon because I felt like it gave me the best uh, of breed in the discretionary space um, with McDonald's right behind Amazon in the discretionary space uh, and then Leggett and Platt as well uh, in the discretionary space so kind of three of my favorites there um, I'm not in Leggett I did just uh, took liquidations in the mid 50s uh, as it ran up pretty pretty good there so Amazon plays a nice position here uh, in this portfolio anchoring in the discretionary next is, is Boeing um, Boeing is one that we're going to continue to build on I'm going to monitor this holding and we're going to build upon it one of my favorite companies to invest in and um, I, I think here as it gains strength and gains back some of the orders uh, in their uh, commercial size of the business, it's going to uh, really lend to the bottom line um, and, and supplement the other two elements of their business um, on uh, corporate shipping as well as the government contracts that they run in the aerospace. Um, that uh, um, you know, it's it's a company I want to invest in. It's just that simple. Um, unfortunately, I really didn't have a whole lot of room in the industrial sector to add Boeing. Um, but I went ahead and bit the bullet, and I, I, I added it into the portfolio, and we'll, we'll track that. And we'll see how it does. Now, Facebook was one that I've um, swung trade three times in the Roth. I had it channeled very, very nicely, rendered some really nice channeling profit within the Roth. So those profits are sitting there, and this is a newly established position in the brokerage account in Facebook, Okay. Uh, Facebook is um, best in breed in the telecom space, in my opinion. So you've got Facebook and you've got Disney, as well as AT&T uh, that I put in here uh, in this portfolio. And then Verizon is in the Roth. Um, so they just give you some idea about the exposure to the space uh, in telecom, uh, as well as Google, which I think is also best in breed right up there at the top with Facebook. Um, but Google is currently being held within the Roth, and we're sitting on a nice profit with Google as well. But Facebook fit this nice uh, large cap growth in telecom in this element, um, and it helps supplement the AT&T position that I've got as a proxy to bonds in this brokerage account. So kind of cool anyway. And then right below it here, highly on holdings here, we're, we're kind of settled at this position here. Uh, 25,000 of real dollars in Hylion, just around $2,400. Um, uh, that's been shaved down from what I had at one point up to about 3,500 shares. A lot of those shares were bought in the low eights. So I rendered some very nice profit on that block of 1,100 first in, first out shares, right, in Hylion. So um, we've got it down to a little bit more of a managed situation as it's run up here. Uh, and I wanted to uh, um, really get that a little bit more in line with where I want to be. Um, it had nothing to do with my uh, bullish thesis on the company. It was more of a, a, a positional move in, in the holding. And then I've settled out right here at a fairly nice, um, nice holding, and, and it's set. If it goes down, I'll buy more. Um, but I'm not looking to accumulate more shares here as the company is still kind of in the early stages of testing the V1 hybrid as well as um, the ERX rollout for demos in later 2021. So we'll continue to just own that. It's a long speculative position and um, they got to dev devote a, a pretty unique strategy to um, materializing that holding over time. Uh, Lind is a new position here in the material sector, um, best in breed, no doubt about it. I, I loved everything that I saw here for growth potential in, uh, going forward. They increased the dividend by another 10%, so that was nice. But Lind has always been on my list as, along with uh, Applied Materials, excuse me, not Applied Materials, but APD. Another good one. Uh, so I, I needed some materials exposure uh, outside of the specialty ETF for materials in the other portfolio. I really wanted a single holding name in this and uh, Lind fit the bill for a nice, big, healthy position here at 4,500 in this portfolio. Um, 3M kind of adds to that, uh, that, that dividend 
um, uh, element to this portfolio in the industrial space. It's one of those companies that I feel like can be a cornerstone in any portfolio. It's a very easy company to own, a really safe company, very large um, uh, growth prospects and earnings are usually just right in line with where projections fall. So very predictable company uh, in that the products that they sell, they have a very, very wide diversified portfolio of products that they sell and a very wide moat to boot. So very, very predictable in that the monies that they make um, are very, very, um, very, very solid and producing those uh, products out there that people need, they love, and, and they buy uh, year in and year out. Um, with the triple Qs, very simple here, um, get your NASDAQ exposure. So got a $5,000 bill in the triple Qs, so that just adds another element to this to grab that broad NASDAQ market uh, and then to complement that with the VTI to grab the total market. That's um, the largest position in this portfolio outside of the Hylion position. So nice to see that. Um, and then I touched on the proxies here in Duke Energy in the utility space and Southern Company. I've been in and out of those positions for you guys that chronicle the portfolios with me. Um, I'm back in them with much smaller positions than I had before as these have run up nicely. And if they digress, we'll buy more. If not, we'll hold them and we'll sit on the fat dividend. Very, very good. I'm very bullish on both these companies. They're very good. They're going to be slow and steady. And I think probably return a little bit more uh, potential for capital appreciation as well as pay a, a nice dividend uh, in excess of what I could hope to get um, with any nature or makeup of a bond portfolio. So that's I opt to own those regulated utilities in that capacity. It just makes more sense to me for, for, for what I'm trying to do. Uh, and then finally, Wish is the newest speculative position in the portfolio. Um, it, it's really just been kind of a falling knife. Um, I, I really think I got a good entry on it. It's obviously fallen back just a touch, um, down 10% since I bought it. That is two installation, three installations of buys there. Um, so even with the buy points that I, I thought were pretty attractive when I took them, um, it's come back a little bit here. Sub eight, I believe, is where it's trading. Yeah, 794. And we'll continue to monitor that. I, I, I like the prospects of the company going forward. Um, we just need to get those earnings up uh, in line. The revenues are fantastic. Um, but we, we need to we need to turn out some some earnings in this and when it does the stock will turn around So anyway guys, I hope you appreciated that this is the taxable brokerage account reviewed for your viewing pleasure With that we'll kick you back to YouTube and we will conclude the video All right guys, so we've come out of the review of the taxable brokerage account This is a, a jointly owned account very important multiple strategies at play uh, dividends with some speculation and, and growth and, and a small element of passive uh, in it. And, and for a lot of investors out there, you could say, well, do I have to do it all, Ryan? You don't. You don't. These multiple strategies, you could pick one. Uh, I would recommend the passive approach first. I think that's a good order of operations to enter into a wealth building strategy for yourself to start uh, and then look to layer up into the future. Uh, but you're not going to have the decision to layer up into the future if you never get started. And hopefully this can provide some inspiration for you on, on what's possible. Somebody who's done this, who d doesn't have a huge amount of money, doesn't come from money and, and uh, has done so on a blue collar salary my whole life. Um, it's just the willingness to do really is what separates me. And I expect that a lot of people out there can share in that same vision of financial security for themselves uh, and their families. If you enjoy what you got coming through the Independent Investor Channel, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, I upload weekly uh, on the channel, provide a lot of different conduits to information and me personally. I'm going to leave your comments at the bottom of the video. And if you think that this could motivate someone that you know out there, Make sure and share the message with them. Um, bring them onto the channel, whether it be vocally or through social media, no problem. We'll have them on the channel. We'll get them motivated about starting a wealth building uh, program in a small or even maybe in some, uh, some situations, a large capacity. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.